Hi, welcome to a, probably going to be a 45 minute vinyasa class now. My name's Kaylee. When you're ready, you can meet me on your back on your mat. So lie down on your back, step your feet down underneath your knees. So there's a little bit of support for the lower back of the pelvis. And then bring your hands somewhere onto your torso, wherever they land is fine. Let the eyes close or perhaps even soften down. And just breathe in and breathe out for a moment. Really tuning into your body. Whatever's been going on in your day so far, in your world, in your life. Yoga is a place to kind of integrate all of that. And what that means when we're doing a physical practice is that we actually create a tiny bit of distance between our life outside and our physical experience right here in this moment. You feel the connection to your hands against your torso, wherever they landed, feel the temperature of your hands, the amount of pressure there, not pushing down, but just feeling right, the weight of the palms against the belly or the chest. Take a couple of deeper cycles of breath here. So take a breath in, let the rib cage expand out to the sides and even up a little bit. So the shoulders may even lift up toward the ears. Hold the breath for a moment at the top. And then when you're ready, open up, exhale. Maybe you feel the hips release, the shoulders relax. Take two more breaths like that. You can bring your hand onto the rib cage if that helps you with that tactile experience, breathing in, ribs going out and up and maybe even back a little bit. Exhale, completely let it go, let it release. Two more breaths like that on your own. Last one, so helpful to just give yourself this moment to settle in. Go ahead and bring the arms into a T or a cactus. Tiny little windshield wiper motion with the feet. See if you can keep the safe ground kind of connected to your mat. Keep that movement small to start, staying, keeping the knees within the frame of your mat here. And then see if you can just feel the pelvis and the bones of the upper leg and gliding around. If it feels good to increase that range of motion, you can go ahead and bring the knees all the way to one side and all the way to the other. Throughout this practice today, really commit to practicing from a space that's full of kindness and awareness. And that might mean that we notice when we're not paying attention or when we're not being super kind and making whatever adjustments you need to come back to that commitment. No judgment, no beating yourself up. It's not what it's about. Go ahead and bring your palms to your kneecap. So bring your knees in a little bit and let's just circle the knees. Circling still, massaging through the pelvis and the lower back. Really important to switch the direction of those circles to send some energy and some gentle movement into these big joints in the body before we start loading them and taking more intense styles of movement. Bring your hands behind the knees and then one at a time, kick the legs up toward the ceiling. And so pointing and flexing through the feet. We're not going for the deepest hamstring stretch yet, just kind of exploring what's going on there. Let's keep both legs up for a moment, circle out the ankles, separate the toes really wide here if you can, switch the direction of those circles. Awesome, bring the feet down again underneath the knees. I'm gonna do a little glute activation. So scoop the tailbone up toward the knees and then just squeeze the glutes. So squeeze the butt together here. I'm not high at all. I'm like a centimeter up off of the floor, but it already feels like a lot of work. All right, slowly lift the hips up. Keep that activation in the hamstrings, in the glutes. Soft muscles of the face. 
I'm gonna keep the left foot down so we'll keep even uh, pressure through that sacroiliac joint through the lower back, but push more through the right foot. So start to use the right leg a lot more than the left. Then switch, push more through the left foot. Use the left leg a ton more than the right. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. This feels like a ton of work to my body right now. All right, even out the pressure, lift the hips high, bring the arms up toward the ceiling, and then bring the palms facing the ceiling if you're holding a tray above you. Glutes are probably burning a little bit, that's okay. Lift the heels and lower the heels. So slow little lifts here, activating the calves. Maybe coming back to that deep, clear breath. Breathing in, breathing out through the nose when you can. For three, two, one, slowly lower everything down. Oof. Bring the knees into the chest. Rock and roll forward and backward until you can rock all the way up to your standing forward fold. So use your hands if you like. I started mentioning before I hit record uh, that my body's feeling a little weird today. I've got some stuff going on. So my goal is to take this practice really pretty seriously, but to take uh, myself with a lot of humility, a lot of grace. So if you're feeling a little fussy or your coordination's a little off, you're not alone. Hanging out in ragdoll for a moment, finding a little bit of movement in any way that feels good here. And maybe for you, it's not physical kind of funkiness, but you could be experiencing a little bit more of that emotional or mental or psychological stuff. That's cool too. You give yourself a big pat on the back for being on your mat today. Release the fingertips down. Tense the fingers so you're bringing a little bit of the floor up toward you. Deep bend to the left knee. And then inhale your right arm. You might even hover the left hand or bring the left elbow to the left knee. So it depends on what your intention is here. I'm really looking for some rotation in the spine, more than a forward fold, more than a hamstring stretch. So bringing that left elbow to the left knee feels like I'm meeting that objective. One more deep breath in, and then let's switch sides. So right knee bends deeply, maybe the right fingertips come down, maybe the right elbow comes to the right knee, left arm goes up. Play around with relaxing the head, so relaxing that right ear forward, the right shoulder. Deep breath in, fold forward through the center. Heel to the feet a bit closer together, whatever spacing is gonna feel best for you today. Palms to the shins as we take a deep breath in, shrug the shoulders away from the ears, and then palms to the calves as you exhale, tuck the chin in toward the chest, lengthen the back of the neck. Slowly unfold, letting the chin be the last thing to lift, sweeping the arms up overhead as you breathe in. Let's take a side bend, catch the left wrist, bring it up and over. Maybe bend the right knee a little bit as you anchor down through the outer edge of the left foot. Come back through the center, big breath. Catch the right wrist. Stretch to the left, option to bend the left knee. Try and keep the pelvis level so you're not dumping the tailbone back, but bringing that stretch into the outer edge of the right hip. Come back through the center, big inhale. Interlace your hands at your lower back. So pull the hands down, a little bend in the knees. Take a breath in as you lift the chest and the chin, and then keep the bind as you fold forward. Totally okay to soft bend the knees or deep bend the knees. Let the head drop. Big breath here in through the nose. Lion's breath option on the exhale. Stick the tongue out, maybe even cross the eyes. It is of not taking it too seriously today. Last way stretch, breathe in. Plant the hands, step back to your plank pose and then pause in your plank and absolutely lower the knees if that feels supportive for your body today. Either way, with the wrists underneath the shoulders, press the hands not just down, but energetically like you're moving the thumbs toward one another. So if you can find a pec wall behind your chest, shift onto the tiptoes, keep that pressure downward and inward for the palms as you lower all the way down this first time through. Walk the fingers about a foot away from the shoulders off of your mat. We'll sit onto the hardwood. I have no idea if you're practicing on hardwood or not. 
press into the toes and then lift the, in fact, I'm pretty sure some of you are, lift the head, the neck, the chest. As you exhale, look towards your left shoulder, drop the right shoulder down. Inhale, come back to the center, touch the fingers. Look toward the right shoulder, exhale your left shoulder down. Come back through center, take a breath here. As you exhale, lower down, bring the palms underneath the shoulders, tuck the toes, press to your hands and your knees, big breath in, and then circle over the shoulder, or circle over the wrists and the knees, rather two times to the right, and then two times to your left. Come to the center, find cow pose, tip the tailbone up, tuck the toes under, lift your chin as you breathe in. And then take it into down dog as you breathe out. Stay here for a moment. Nice first down dog, yes. Pedal it out, checking in with your head, your shoulders, your spine. When you're ready, take a walk back to the top of the mat. Feet underneath the hips or wherever it feels right in your body. Halfway stretch, breathe in. Fold forward and exhale. Rise with the in breath, big full body stretch. We're gonna flow through that. Catch the left wrist side bend to the right for your exhale. Back through the center, breathe in. Catch the right wrist, take it left as you breathe out. Option to soften the left knee. Back to the center on the inhale. Let's add on one little piece. Bend the elbows, find that trident or full pose shape on the exhale. Interlace the hands, see if you can switch with pinkies on top, the one that feels weird. Lift the chest and the chin, breathe in. Keep the bind and fold forward as you exhale. Halfway stretch, palms to shins on the in-breath. Plant the hands, step back, high push up to chaturanga or to your belly. So bend the elbows, lower half or all the way, then come through the center, cobra or upward facing dog. Pause, really feel the stretch, finishing the breath, maybe looking from shoulder to shoulder. Drop the knees on the exhale, press it back to child's pose. Stay here for one breath, crawling the fingertips forward, softening the chest and the hips downward. Inhale, slide to the hands and the knees, circle twice to the right. Exhale, circle twice to the left, warming up the wrists. Cow, tuck the toes, breathe in, lift the chin. Down dog, send the hips up and back, look at the knees or the navel, take a breath here. Walk the feet to the top of the mat when you're ready. One more time through like that halfway stretch, breathe in. Fold forward and breathe out. Rise on the inhale, focus on the breath. This time let's take an open arm twist. I lied, I said one more time through, but reach the arms away from the midline, right arm back, left arm forward, and lengthen the crown of the head up. Come back to the center, square the chest forward, square the hips forward as you breathe in. Take that open arm twist to the left. I guess I didn't lie, I changed my mind. <laughs> Come back to the center, take a breath in. We'll add on that same piece, bend to the elbows, try it on the exhale. Interlace at the lower back, breathe in. Forward fold with the bind as you breathe out. Palms to shins, smooth on the inhale. Plant the hands, step back, and then flow through your vinyasa. This time, we'll meet in downward facing dog. You can always just step into down dog, settle into the breath there. Check in with your spine when you land in downward facing dog. See if you can find a nice long alignment there. So not finding a back bend so much, maybe even bending the knees and trying to lift the pelvis and the hip creases. Root down through the left foot, inhale the right leg. Let's externally open that hip, so bend to the right knee, stacking it open on top of the left, and then take a couple little circles through the right ankle, a couple times in both directions. 
gotten pretty big on rotating the joints that can move in these circular motions. See if you can go slow and smooth those circles out. Re-extend the right leg, take a breath in. We're gonna step into Skandasana. So big step with that right foot to the top of the mat. Pivot the toes to the left. Left toes come up. The right heel might lift, that's fine too. We'll be here for a moment. You can use your hands in front of you for some support. You might keep the right hand down and inhale the left arm. Maybe you bring the hands to your heart or bind outside of that right leg. We're going to take it into a rotation and dragonfly twist. Bring the left hand down underneath the left shoulder. Pivot the left heel up, stack the right knee over the right ankle, and then open your right arm. Press back through your left heel, lift up through the back of the left knee, and then lengthen the crown of the head away from the sternum here. Deep in breath. Exhale your right hand down inside of the right foot. Give about a quarter of a turn to the left, pivoting your toes to the left for a wide legged straddle. Ooh, give the head a little check. So shake it out, maybe nod the chin, yes, or shake the head no. You can play around here for a couple more cycles of breath, opening up through the hamstrings, never ever forcing anything. So there might be a nice bend in the knees here. If the legs are already straight, keep the heels down, but shift some weight toward the balls of the feet. Feel the hip creases and the sit bones lifting. And then walk your hands back toward the top of the mat. Rebend this front knee for a moment. Hands are going to plant down underneath the shoulders, bringing into a little upper body here. Find a three point plank. So, right leg to float back in line with the right hip. Press the palms down, engage through the chest by energetically moving the hands toward each other. Then bend the right knee, flex the right foot. We're going to slow motion transition. Outer edge of left foot drops down, bring the right toes back down behind you. For your wild thing. Breathing here for a moment. And make this a little bit of a dynamic kind of movement. So this will be an in breath. Exhale your right hand down, bring the right knee to the right elbow, keeping the hips in line with the shoulders. Come back to wild thing. Breathe in. Exhale, right hand down, right knee, right elbow. See if you can keep the pelvis relatively in the same plane as you move back and forth between these two. So my hips aren't lifting really high, engaging through the abdominals to make that possible. Last time, land in your wild thing. Oh, goodness. And then slowly lower the hips down. So let's see. Right knees bent, left legs long. Right arm is up. We're going to bring the right, keep the right arm up, but see if you can lift the left toes for the right hand a couple times. So probably going to reach the right hand forward. Hopefully feeling a bit of left quad activation here. All right, keep that foot down this next time. Take it back to wild thing, rotate it up, and then bring that right hand down, high push up through your vinyasa this time. Let's rinse it out, pausing in your back bend. Let that feel nice in the lower back. And then downward facing dog. Clear that side out. Deep breath in through the nose. Open your mouth side out. Left leg, here we go. Inhale the leg lifts. Bend the knee, external rotation. Couple circles with that top ankle. Switching the direction of those rotations. Breaks in the left leg on the in breath. Step forward, Sandasana. So bringing the fingertips to the inside of the left foot. And then finding whatever version of this pose is going to be most productive, most beneficial to your body, to your mind. And put yourself to smooth out the connection with the breath. Places to soften around the neck or the jaw. We'll take our dragonfly twist when you're ready. Right hand plants underneath the right shoulder. Pivot the right heel with the left arm. And 
another long breath in. Left hand down inside of the right foot. Take that little turn, pivoting the toes toward the right for your prasarita. Just really exploring the sensations that arise in your body. Maybe even playing around with coming into about 70 to 80% of your full range of motion and exploring what's there. So we're sure we're not forcing anything. Walk the hands back toward the top of the mat. Here's this, it's fun business here. Push the palms down, three point high plank. Bend the left knee, flex the left foot. Feel where your hips are in space and then see if you can pivot into your wild thing. And then back to that three point high plank, bring left knee, left elbow, keeping the pelvis about the same distance from the floor as you move back and forth. So in this variation, we're getting a lot more abdominal activation. If that's not what you're after today, feel free to lift the hips real high as you come into your wild thing. The next time you find a wild thing, let's go ahead and lower the hips down, left knee is bent, right leg straight, left arm is up, and then toe to hand. Squeezing through the right quad, so the right upper thigh here is active lifting that leg up. We take it back to our wild thing and through our vinyasa. Lift the hips and then flow through to downward facing dog. Totally feeling pretty warmed up in the arms and the core. Whew. Take a breath in through the nose. Big exhale when you're ready. Clear some space. Look toward the top of the mat with the heels. Empty the breath and then step or hop up. Halfway stretch, we're gonna add on here, big breath in. Fold forward, exhale. Rise with the inhale, take that big full body stretch here. And then let's say lightning share. So sweep the arms back, tiniest little tip to the tailbone. So you're just creating a sense of spaciousness in the lower back there. And squeeze the pinky fingers toward each other. You might even find the hands for a moment. I'm gonna pump the breath a little bit here. Stand up on the inhale, straight arms and legs. Lightning chair, exhale, take your seat, hinge at the hips. And go a couple times like that. I'm gonna focus less on the number of reps and more on activation and alignment today. So move at whatever pace lets you feel connected. Feel the feet rooting down. Feel every little muscle fiber that you can safely flex in the legs, the fronts of the thighs, the backs of the thighs. The next time you find your lightning chair, hold it there. Option to lift the heels, soften the neck and the jaw. Three, two, Heels down on one, arms up, inhale. Forward fold, exhale. Halfway stretch, breathe in. Plant the hands, step back and flow through your vinyasa. If those purse slips exhales are helpful for you, probably a little loud in the mic, but feel free to follow suit there. We're gonna change up our flow a bit. Right leg comes up on the inhale. Step the right foot, same deal, Sandasana on the exhale. Find your balance here, take a breath in. And then dragonfly twist, so we will change it up, but not quite yet. Big inhale for your dragonfly twist. As you exhale, bring the right forearm to the right thigh, pivot the left heel down, finding side angle. First time we've seen this pose, pause and Notice the sensations in the body. Where can you bring a little bit more support, a little bit more specific alignment? You start with where the feet are. So where the feet are in the space, make sure you can press firmly down. Pull some energy up through the legs. If right forearm and right thigh feels good to you today, keep it there. Feel free to hover the right fingertips or bring the right hand down. We're gonna take this to crescent lunge on an inhale. So you can sweep this top arm down and forward as you spin the left heel up. Set the eyes to one spot as you breathe. Bring the 
hands to the heart, relax the shoulders, take a breath in. And then let's find a prayer twist, hinge forward, left elbow outside of right thigh. The back leg strong, keep pressing through the ball of your left foot, sending some energy back through your left heel as you reach forward through the crown of the head. I mentioned coordination for me today is feeling a little funky. It's okay. I'm going to take this next transition into a single leg mountain. So right foot's going to stay down. Inhale, oof, the left knee up and the arms up. Finding that single leg mountain, finding that balance for a moment. And then let's set up that eagle pose or a figure four. So that would be left leg over, left arm under for eagle. If that feels like too much compression in the knees, a nice option is bringing the outer edge of the left foot to the top of the right thigh, and sinking the hips back and down. Either way, set your focal point, your drishti to one spot. See if you can create a pause at the top of the inhale and at the bottom of the exhale. I'm going to bring that left knee back up and the arms up. Breathe in. Step the left foot down. Bring the hands to the heart and then sit into a little squat. Lift the heels. Take a breath in. Lower the heels as you exhale. Bring them back to that single leg down. Left knee, arms up on the inhale. Left foot down, hands to the heart. Squat on the exhale. Heels up. Breathe in. Heels down, breathe out, and ankles are snapping. Inhale and reach. Back to that body weight squat. And then we'll move like this a couple times. If you need a little bit more here, don't worry about the coordination. If it's not coming together smooth, that's fine. Just keep working on it. If you want a little bit more, you can add a little hop. A little hop to your squat, a little hop to your mountain. For three, for two, we'll meet in that single leg mountain on one, take a breath in. Fly it back in to airplane, stabilize that front leg by softening the right knee just a little bit and then firming up the right back. Slow motion, back to crescent lunge, deep inhale here. Open arm twist this time, right hand back, left arm forward. Reach the left arm up, bring the right fingertips down, take a breath in, and then start to bend that back knee. So you're bending the left knee so it's coming underneath the left hip, and then like you're on the slowest elevator possible, lower the left knee down. Deep inhale there. Frame the right foot with your fingertips. Find Hanumanasana, straightening out the right leg. Just until you feel a meaningful sense of lengthening in the back of the right thigh. We'll be here for about three deep breaths. Option to close the eyes and just really dive into the sensation. Our full inhale. Release through the shoulders and the jaw as you exhale. Rebend the front knee, tuck the back toes under. Here we go, wild thing. Lift the right heel, pivot it down. Inhale, now go ahead and take a back bend. Lift the hips and the pelvis. Exhale, bring your right hand down. Let's pivot the heels to the left and take, or the, to the right, excuse me, and take side plank. So pivot the heels to your right, lift the left arm up. Tuck the floating ribs in here. Squeeze the glutes a little bit to protect your knees here. Big inhale as you reach that top arm forward, rainbowing through the spine, and then flow through your vinyasa. We'll meet in downward facing dog. See if I can remember that whole thing now. The left leg's gonna start us off. Breathe in, so fresh set of muscles in the left. Step forward for skandasana, as you breathe out. Find your balance on the inhale. Drag and play twist on the exhale. 
Take a breath in and then set up your side angle, left forearm, left thigh. Or if you know that your body likes having that left hand down or hovering the left hand, just make sure that you're in an alignment that feels steady. Nice full breath in here. Pivot the back heel up, circle that right arm back and then down and then up to crescent lunge. Just breathing, single pointed focus with the eyes, but a softness to that. And then notice if you're kind of tunnel visioning with your drishti. See if instead of tunnel visioning without moving your head, you can expand your field of vision. So opening up that peripheral vision as much as you can. Not necessarily even moving the eyes around, but just noticing what you can see all the way to the right, all the way to the left. It's actually a pretty helpful way to calm the nervous system. Think about when we're super stressed, we do get a little bit of that tunnel vision. So we want to have some effort here, but not be overtaxing ourselves. Hands to the heart, breathe in. Twist to your left. This is where I'm second guessing the flow that I set up today. We're going to take it to that single leg mountain. Inhale, oof, the right knee up. Maybe you get there with a couple steps forward. That is fine. And then either eagle or your figure four. So right ankle on the top of the left thigh for figure four, big hip hinge, or right knee over, right arm under for an eagle. Maybe you take a little bit of both, right? You could bring the hands to the heart, or the hips in eagle. Instead of taking that bind, that's a good place to practice that peripheral vision, Drishti. So eyes are set, you're not moving around in the eye sockets, but if you're in that eagle bind, your forearms are in the way of right that Drishti that's right in front of you. So noticing opening up the peripheral vision. And back to single leg mountain. Inhale, right leg and arms. Body weight squat, exhale your hands to your heart, feet underneath the hips. Lift the heels, breathe in. Lower the heels as you breathe out first time, slow. Inhale, lift the right knee and arms. Exhale, body weight squat. Lift the heels, breathe in. Lower the heels, breathe out. Inhale, single leg now. And then take a few on your own, maybe adding that little squat, hop, or not. Right? Every single day is different. Maybe you've got a lot of energy to burn off or work through. Maybe you just need to go through the motions today without pushing. Find a way to honor exactly where you are. Last three, two, single leg mountain on one, big inhale. Airplane on the exhale. Settling back into the breath. Low motion, crescent lunge, drop the ball of the right foot, inhale the arms up, open arm twist to the left, reach the right arm up, left hand comes back, and then slow motion, bring the right knee not just straight down, but see if you can imagine bringing it forward a bit as you lower slowly, inhale, and then find your Hanumanasana on this side. Working on coming about 70 to 80% of full range of motion and exploring sensations there. If you have like a lot of chronic pain in the body, even if you do have a ton of mobility and flexibility, I would invite you to play around with doing a little bit less in terms of bringing those muscles into their end range of motion. See if taking that Slightly less intense variation can support the nervous system. A couple more cycles of breath. Here's our transition. Walk the hands forward, breathe in left knee, tuck right toes, lift the right knee. Wild thing. Feel free to take a back bend here. We're pretty warm. Breathe in. Exhale the left hand down. Now we pivot the heels to the left. Reach the right arm up. Firm through the glutes to protect the knees here. So there's gravity pushing the knees down. And we don't really want to do that. 
of the knees to be stable in that joint space. And use the thighs and the glutes to do that. Take the right arm forward, arch the rib cage up a bit as you breathe in, and then flow through your vinyasa. Nice and deep breaths here, working back into downward facing dog. Let's clear all of that out before we put it together. One time for a big inhale through the nose, hold it up. Open mouth, exhale. Right leg, here we go. Breathe in, breath in motion. Step the right foot forward on the exhale. Skandasana, it doesn't have to be real low. Take a breath in. Dragonfly twist as you breathe out. Find that rotation on an inhale. Extended side angle on the exhale. Stay here, take a breath in. Now we go crescent lunge, left arm circles back down and then up. Inhale as you lift through the fingers. Prayer twist to the right. Single leg mountain, breathe in, left knee comes up. We're gonna take out that extra balance bit. Body weight spot on the exhale, hands to the heart. Maybe you do a little hop and then back to your single leg mountain. Or instead of that hop, you're just lifting the heels. For five, back to single leg mountain on one. Four, three, two, single leg mountain. Meet me there, breathe in. Airplane as you breathe out. Full inhale, find your balance. Stay for the exhale. Here we go, crescent lunge, breathe in. Open arms to the right as you breathe out. Revolved crescent, that left arm up, right hand down on the inhale. Exhale as you soften the back knee toward the floor. Take another breath in and then find your Hanumanasana. Full inhale. Stay for the exhale. We're gonna add one little piece in. As you rebend the right knee, bring your hands to the inside of the right foot and then take your lizard lunge. So palms are down underneath the shoulders or if it feels safe in the front knee to bring the elbows down underneath the shoulders. Three cycles of breath. If you walked the elbows down, come back to the palms. Hands under shoulders, tuck the left set of toes under with the left knee. We're gonna take it to three-legged dog. Kick the right leg up and back, breathe in. And then Spider-Man push up, right foot steps back to where it was outside of the right pinky finger, bend the elbows back as you pull the heart forward. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, Spider-Man push up. Three more, pump the breath. Breathe a little quieter so it's not quite so noisy in the microphone. Last one. Find your three legged dog. Stack bend and open the right knee. Look underneath your left arm. Stay here or slowly flip your dog. Three legged wheel, reaching the right arm up. Shift the weight just about a centimeter forward so your left wrist is under your left shoulder as opposed to having your shoulder way back toward your heel. Breathe in. Flow through your vinyasa. So close, home stretch here. We're gonna cool it off. Left side, inhale, lift the leg. Step it forward, skandasana. Take a breath in. Dragonfly, transition on the breath out. Inhale as you find that rotation and then exhale, extended side angle. Take a breath in as you reach up to the top arm and then back stroke the right arm, lift the right heel, crescent lunge on the inhale. For your twist left on the exhale. Single leg mountain, inhale, lift. Body weight squat, exhale, hands to your heart. Lift the heels or hop and then back to single leg mountain. For five, for four, Moving in a way that's comfortable for the spine. Three, so that means lengthening the low back for me. Two, single leg mountain on one, meet me there, big breath, and then airplane on the exhale. Find the balance, take a breath in, find the ease in the jaw. Stay for the breath out. Crescent lunge, inhale. Open arms, left, exhale. 
revolved crescent. Breathe in, top arm comes up. Slow motion, exhale the back knee down, take a breath. Padmanasana. Catch your breath cycle here in and out. Setting up for a lizard. Three deep breaths. Again, not forcing anything. Find places to find a little bit more ease or space in the body. Brow center, jaw, sides of the neck. If you worked your way onto the elbows, come back to the palms. Right toes tuck. Here's our Spider Man push up bit. Inhale, three legged dog. Five times, left foot steps, bend the elbows, part forward, elbows back. Inhale, kick. Exhale, step that score. Keep going, three more. Focus on the strength in the arms and that mobility in the hip. Last time, find your three-legged dog, bend the left knee, look underneath the right underarm, stay or flip your dog. If you're in flip dog, shift forward a centimeter so that that right shoulder is stacking over the right wrist. Lift the hips. Full inhale. High push up and pause. Last little bit. Keep the hands down. Swivel the heels side to side. Tick tocking the heels. Try and keep the shoulders over the wrists. So not shifting back, right? Three, two, one. Drop the knees. Press it back to child's pose or a seat. Just breathe in, breathe out. Notice the sensations in the body. What's the most generous way that you can think about this moment? The most generous interpretation that you can give to any sensations that arise. If you're not in a seat, go ahead and meet me in a seat for a moment. I'm going to show you something that we're going to do on the back, but it's kind of hard to show here. So when we get onto the back, you're going to bring your arms into kind of the scarecrow shape, and then we're going to alternate, kind of flip-flopping, not bringing the shoulder blade up off of the floor. So work your way onto the back, knees bent underneath the feet. This is it, a muscular activation stretch, just a shoulder and neck release. Lift the head just a tiny bit, tuck the chin for the chest, and then lower the head back down, keeping the back of the neck long. Bring the knees into the chest, circle the knees over the pelvis, or rock side to side, whatever feels good here. If you're circling, switch the direction of that rotation. Time check. All right, we're good. Bring the left foot down under the left knee. Find your figure four crossing the right ankle over the top of the left thigh. This might be plenty of sensation. If you want a little bit more, you can bring the left knee or thigh into the chest. Keep the legs kind of the way that they are. And we're going to find a spinal twist by dropping the knees to the left or dropping the feet. The right foot to the left and the left knee to the left. Bring the right knee in toward the chest a little bit. Use your left hand. And then bring the right hand. Lift the head for a moment. Reach down so if you can catch the left foot. And then once you've caught hold of the left foot, lower the right shoulder back down. You can stay here or you can deepen the stretch by adjusting the hips underneath you more. Extending the right leg out to the left, and then really kicking into the right hand with the left foot. And if that feels way confusing and weird, just bring the knees to a tabletop and drop them to the left for a spinal twist. So we come back to the center. 
maybe a couple little windshield wipers or shift the pelvis around before you set up on the other side, left ankle over the top of the right thigh for your figure four. To notice what wants to arise here. The thinking mind has some commentary, so you can be okay with that without getting overly entangled in it. And if the thoughts are going to come, fine. Just tune back into the sensation of the breath and the sensation of the body. Take that spinal twist, right hand to the left knee. Bringing the left foot down to the right, right hand reaches down for, left hand, excuse me, reaches down for the right foot. Now I'm second guessing everything that I said about the direction here. So if you got super confused, that's all on me, but take a spinal twist to the right, dropping the knees to the right. If you did find your way into this variation of a stretch, uh, you can add on by picking that. I'm sure it's the left leg into the right hand. So it's quite nice if you happen to have something nearby that you can press the left foot into. It'd be a nice little way to leverage that stretch without over pulling any of those tendons or ligaments. Back through the center here, setting up for Shavasana. And I have grown really impartial to however you want to take the spinal resting pose. If it feels better for you to lay on your side or to come to a seat, or even there's um, teachers who are teaching Shavasana standing, if that feels right to you, whatever's going to allow you to start to cultivate a more parasympathetic nervous system response, whatever's going to allow you to start to calm everything down to communicate just through our body language to our nervous system that it's okay to relax, that yes, this was maybe a little bit stressful in terms of all of the movement that we did and all of the demands that we put on the body, but it's okay to shift into a more reparative state here. It's okay to clear out some of those stress hormones. And just listen for the sound of my voice in about 30 to 45 seconds to bring us up together. If you have more time and you'd like to stay in Shavasana longer, go ahead and shut me off and you take care of yourself. Tune back into the space, noticing any sounds, sensation of the body. It might feel good to nod the head real slow side to side or to take some deeper breaths as you set the feet down underneath the knees. Give your arms another good stretch. Just be real patient with your body as you feel ready. Mindfully transition up to a seat. Being the eyes closed or soft as you bring your hands to your heart center. Take one last cleansing breath here together. So deep inhale through the nose, let the belly fill, let the chest expand. And then when you're ready, open mouth, exhale. Keep the eyes open. Thanks for sharing some space with me. I hope. Um, your body feels cared for <laughs> and you feel good about moving into the next part of your day. Take care.